Hello students, let us see the next property of arithmetic operations on intervals. The next property is identity. Previously, we have learned the property of commutativity, associative, associativity. Now, let us learn the property of identity. The identity property says that a plus 0 plus a, uh, a, a will be equal to 0 plus a, that will be equal to a plus 0, where this 0 is a closed interval 0, 0. Similarly, the multiplicative identity is 1, where that 1 is equals to closed interval 1, 1. So, a will be equal to 1 multiplied with a, that is equal to a multiplied with 1. So, now let us prove this. So, first let us consider a. What is a? a is equal to a1, a2. Now, this can be written as a1 plus 0, a2 plus 0. And now, this can be separated as a1, a2 plus 0, 0. And this is what? This is a plus and this is 0. So, a is equal to a plus 0. So, also we can write a which is equal to a1, a2 as equal to 0 plus a1, 0 plus a2. So, this can be written as 0, 0 plus a1, a2. But what is 0, 0? It is the closed interval 0, 0 is 0 plus a. So, we have proved that a is equal to 0 plus a and a plus 0. So, the first identity property is proved. The second multiplicative identity property is this. So, we shall consider 1 multiplied with a for that. <coughs> so, 1 multiplied with a will be equal to this 1 is what closed interval 1, 1 multiplied with a1, a2. And so, this can be written as by the definition, it will be minimum of 1 multiplied with a1, 1 multiplied with a2, again this multiplied with this and a2, comma maximum of a1, comma a2, a1, comma a2 in the same way. And so, that is equal to minimum of this can be written as a1, a2 because anyway it is repeating again and when we take the minimum we can uh, just have we can neglect the repeated values and have it twice and so this will be equal to maximum of a1, a2. So now if suppose if we assume that a2 is greater than a1 so this will be maximum this will be minimum value so this will be equal to the minimum value is a1 because of this assumption a1 comma and uh, maximum value will be a2 so what is this this is actually equal to capital a if we assume it to be uh, the like a1 a to be greater than a2 again it will be capital a only so now we have proved that 1 multiplied with a is equal to capital a and due to the commutative property which we have already proved it will also be equal to a multiplied with 1. So, this is the identity property. So, now next we shall see the next property which is sub distributive property. So, the sub distributive property is this a multiplied with b plus c is a subset of a multiplied with b plus a multiplied with c. So, where we know that a, b, c are intervals. So, now in order to prove that this is a subset of this, we have to prove that take, we have to take an element in this set and we have to prove that it also belongs to this set. Now, we let us take a, an element in this interval. So, sub, if, if suppose let x to be an element of uh, the interval a multiplied with b plus c. So, if we assume this, so we know that x will be an element of which set? a multiplied with b plus c where this a will be an element of capital A, b is an element of capital B and c is an element of capital C. So, we, if we take uh, x to be an element of this, it will be element of this set. So, this set can be actually written as x to be an element of, so we can multiply these two, so it will be a multiplied with b plus a multiplied with C such that A an element of capital A and C an element of capital C. Now because this is an element of this, we can say that X is an element of A multiplied with B 
plus a multiplied with c so therefore this implies that a dot b plus c is a subset of a multiplied with b plus a multiplied with c so this is the sub distributive property so now let us uh, the next is uh, we shall show that the distributive property does not hold for arithmetic operation on intervals so next we have to prove that the distributive property does not hold on arithmetic operations on intervals that is we have to prove that uh, this the uh, no, this is not equal to this so in order to prove that let us just consider an example so let us take a to be equal to 0 comma 1 b to be equal to 1 comma 2 and c to be equal to negative 2 comma negative 1 and let us consider this left hand side so a multiplied with b plus c so this will be equal to a multiplied with b plus c so first let us substitute now what is a 0 comma 1 multiplied with b is closed interval 1 comma 2 plus c is negative 2 comma negative 1 so that is equal to closed interval 0 comma 1 multiplied with now let us add these two so 1 negative 2 so it will be negative 1 comma 2 negative 1 is 1 now next we have to multiply these two so by the property we get this to be equal to minimum of 0 multiplied with this is 0 again 0 1 multiplied with this so negative 1 1 multiplied with this comma maximum of the same value 0 0 negative 1 comma 1 now so that will be equal to now what is minimum of these values it is negative 1 comma the maximum of these values is 1 so this is negative 1 comma 1 and now next we shall take this right hand side okay so that is a dot b plus a dot c so that is equal to what is the interval a it is 0 comma 1 multiplied with the interval b is 1 comma 2 plus the interval a is 0 comma 1 multiplied with the interval c is negative 2 comma negative 1 and so that is equal to now for these two it will be closed interval minimum of 0 multiplied with this 0 0 1 multiplied with 1 1 multiplied with 2 comma maximum of the same values next for this we will have so plus minimum of 0 comma 0 negative 2 comma negative 1 comma maximum of the same values so 0 0 negative 2 comma negative 1 <coughs> and so that will be equal to now what is the minimum of these values it is 0 comma the maximum of these values is 2 plus the minimum of these values is negative 2 comma the maximum of this is 0 and so when we add these two intervals we get we have to add this and this so negative 2 comma you have to add this and this so positive 2 so this is uh, negative 2 comma 2 and here we got as negative 1 comma 1 so which means that uh, from this we can say that a dot b plus c is not equal to a dot b plus a dot c but we can observe that negative 1 comma 1 is a subset of negative 2 comma 2 this is a subset of this interval so, um, so sub distributive property holds but the distributive property does not hold. So hope you have understood the proof of this. In our next video let us see few more properties on this topic. Thank you.